Hello there. The world and its dog must have been watching the goings-on in number 10 over the past couple of days with a sort of sense of morbid curiosity. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost and I'm always uploading new content so please do check back daily and a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And a new Central Broadcast video is up, link in the descriptions box below. Any future visitor to the Boris Johnson number 10 would probably wonder if they're going to be entering a sort of dystopian Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Twilight Zone. They must wonder if they'll be guided from room to room, encountering ever-increasing and untold weirdness and disconnection. Some people like to think that UK politics has the reserved demeanour of Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister, when in fact the last 48 to 72 hours has demonstrated that it comes straight from a carry-on version of an episode of that brainchild of Armando Iannucci, The Thick of It. With a Malcolm Tucker-type character so ably performed by Peter Capaldi, wandering the halls of Westminster meeting out obscene put-downs well worth a watch for the uninitiated. Now I've supported Boris so far because the team he did surround himself with, past tense, were true believers in an independent and sovereign UK, or at least he was the nearest we had with any power to deliver it. But as to the rest of his policies, he appears to be on a par with every other socialist-leaning Tory out there, in both thought and delivery but still a far better prospect than anything Labour could come up with. But what's also of note is the timing where the US presidential elections are concerned. Imminent change in the White House occupancy brings an immediate change in number 10, it seems. So are we now looking at a broken Brexit scenario? More on that in a minute. Now, Boris has been, at best, laissez-faire with most things, but at worst almost childlike. So you get the impression that Number 10 now resembles a creche more than it does the beating heart of government for the world's fifth largest economy. And now we've gone from a hard-on Brexit policy with a central theme of reform to hard-on green policy with fluffy edges, all within a few days. The minute-by-minute -minute direction of government now seems to be dependent on which way the wind is blowing Boris Johnson's blonde locks. Maybe it's always been that way. Or maybe Boris Johnson is more of an intellectual pillow than we suspected, always bearing the impression of the last person he spoke to. You wonder if those around him would only talk to him about certain subjects at certain hours of the day. In the morning, when he's digesting the breakfast that he's just had with his living partner Carrie Simmons, talk to him about the Green Agenda. Want to talk Brexit and House of Lords reform? Speak to him later, when he's had a stint with Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane. And if you want something actually done, toddle off to the Cabinet Office and have a word with Michael Gove. How can the Prime Minister have presided over a number 10 machine that became paralysed by infighting? To the point that Carrie Simmons was reportedly bombarding him with texts and WhatsApp messages on her views on government policy at the rate of 25 an hour, while the Vote Leave Brexiteer boys were wandering around Westminster briefing against her, calling her Princess Nut Nut. Sounds more like a playpen than number 10. And as a UK voter, I get twitched when it seems that we have a consort to the PM who views him as her personal way to shape the future for the country. I take the view that the partner to the Prime Minister should be more like Dennis Thatcher, rather than ensuring their partner is fed a constant diet of favoured policy while ensuring that the rest of the team, and in fact the world, knows about it. It seems that the Sherry Booth approach is more the order of the day. Wonder if there's any Cabinet Office guidance for spouses and partners. 
and all the while this was bubbling along, Boris did nothing, until it all exploded around him and it was far too late to recover the situation. Now he's forced to cull the entire government team of any Dominic Cummings supporter. In fact, anyone who knew him, or met him, or had his telephone number, or email address, or even knew there was someone called Dominic Cummings. And as he was reportedly ejected from number 10 for the last time on Friday, you get wind of rumours of a loud victory party being held by Princess Nutnut, with the mail reporting... Just hours after Dominic Cummings had left number 10 on Friday afternoon, his few allies who remained in the building claimed that they heard the distinctive strains of a victory party from the Downing Street flat inhabited by Carrie Simmons. Ms Simmons' friends deny that there was a boisterous celebration, the latest in a vicious cycle of claim, denial and counterclaim by the warring factions – but there can be little doubt that Boris Johnson's fiance has emerged triumphant in the extraordinary power struggle she has waged with the adviser and Lee Kane, Mr Cummings' vote leave ally. And now we have a pandemic on our hands with a few weeks to go until the end of the Brexit implementation period and we have a directionless government. Yes, directionless. And we know it's directionless, because everyone is asking the question, what direction will the Boris government be taking now that Cummings has left and Carrie's apparently taken over? So yes, by definition, we have a directionless government. And as a result, rumours are now rife that Boris will be gone within a year, with talk that Michael Gove might view this as an opportune time for his own career. And yes, Carrie has taken over, with the press saying that Boris has overruled the Chancellor Rishi Sunak to ensure the green funds Carrie supports get financed. And it's emerging that the sale of all new cars with fossil fuelled only engines will be banned within 10 years. And then of course there's the Brexit angle. All this is happening just as we approach the most critical phase of Brexit – and so soon after self-proclaimed Irishman Joe Biden looks set to be the new leader of the so far free world. Were Cummings and Kane marched into Boris's office and told it's all change for a new normal Brexit of appeasing both the EU and the US? When Cummings eventually left number 10 through that famous polished front door, did the box he was clutching contain the last vestiges of a proper Brexit? Are we about to witness a massive sellout of Brexit? Paul Baldwin in The Express says, Try this on for size. Came from a pretty well-placed source. The whole Carrie Simmons sisterhood ganging up thing is a feint, a distraction from the reality that Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane quit number 10 because they are furious with the Brexit deal which has already been agreed. And he goes on to say that if his sources are correct, we'll be selling out our fishing community again and effectively handing over control of Northern Ireland to the European Union. And Nigel Farage tweeted... It is well documented that I have never liked Dominic Cummings, but he has backed Brexit. Seeing him leave number 10 carrying a cardboard box tells me a Brexit sellout is close. Although the man at the pointy end of the talks for the UK, Lord David Frost, has himself said in a series of tweets, We are working to get a deal but the only one that's possible is one that is compatible with our sovereignty and takes back control of our laws, our trade and our waters. That has been our consistent position from the start and I will not be changing it. There has been some progress in a positive direction in recent days. We also now largely have common draft treaty texts, though significant elements are of course not yet agreed. We will work to build on these and get an overall agreement if we can. But we may not succeed. Either way, as the Prime Minister Boris Johnson made clear on the 16th of October, people and businesses must prepare for the change that is coming on the 31st of December, most of which happens whether there is a deal or not. 
This all goes to prove the accuracy of that age-old adage, a week is a long time in politics. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.